For over a decade, Pink has forged an exceptional career. The controversial star has been a regular fixture on the world's charts since 2000, after selling 40 million albums and 70 million singles globally, she is indisputably one of the best-selling musical artists of all time. A girl from Pennsylvania who got the party started recorded her first album at 15 and is now recognized as one of the most daring and complex performers of the modern era. I'm old school. I believe in taking what you want and changing it if it's not right and... Just having fun, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, man. <laughs> Known for her tough girl image, in a world of bland performers, Pink is one of a kind. Sorry for asking this, uh, are you a lesbian? <laughs> Do you want me to be a lesbian? <laughs> I don't like anything that's not dangerous. I got hogtied in the air at about 30 feet. <laughs> Night number two. It's fun, especially when you can scare the crap out of everyone that's working on the tour every night. Makes you feel good. <laughs> I hope I never go up. I feel like I've actually regressed. <laughs> The outspoken star is refreshingly open and honest in a sterile industry that is usually anything but. Everyone's very good at being diplomatic, and I'm not. I'd never learned that. I tend to piss off a lot of people. Working with Pink is not just working with an artist. It's like one of the biggest artists in the industry. I remember the rehearsal for the Brit Awards, her having some deep words about the choreography. Pink came back and was like, yeah, I don't like this. And we were like, oh, okay. That freaked me out a bit. The Brit Awards are like a day away. And we were like, whoa, we've just had these nice rehearsals. It's cool, because we have to get it done. She had an idea of what she wanted her piece naturally to look like. The choreographer and the rest of the team had to kind of conform to that idea, which meant we changed a lot of the show. She's done some really strong stuff. She's challenged the president. She's been quite radical in that way. Well, my dad served in Vietnam. My brother's in the Air Force as we speak. I don't agree with either one of them. And the only thing I'll say about that is that Michael Moore is my hero. She has got an outspoken attitude and I greatly admire her for that. The wild side of Pink's image is what I think people like about her, what people are interested in about her. I mean, if you speak your mind, it's just telling the truth and real, and if people don't like it. And no offense to, you know, well, okay, offense, whatever, I don't really care. I'm making fun of it, because that's what I do. No one else talks so why shouldn't I? <laughs> Alicia Beth Moore, better known as Pink, grew up in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Her mother was a nurse and her father a Vietnam veteran. Alicia's interest in music began at an early age. She was born in Philadelphia in uh, 1979. She did gymnastics for eight years or so when she was younger and her first dream was to be an Olympic gymnast, so it's obviously something that stayed with her. She does huge gymnastics. She did eight years of training as a gymnast to fling herself around stage. There is no denying the devastating impact of Alicia's parents' divorce, which occurred when she was nine years old. They had a very tempestuous relationship and divorced when she was young. She's always sort of battled with that. It could be reasonably argued that Pink made her mark by exploring, examining, and then making records based around memories of her childhood pain. All artists, they dig deep to find whatever it is that gives them honesty and integrity. And if they can do that, it's going to ring with a higher truth. She's genuinely just trying to work some stuff through and make art out of it, which is all artists are trying to do. When people say you're soulful, like, you're so... It's hard to explain, like... You have to have been exper you have to have experienced things. You have to have been through something to be able to pull that from deep inside. It's 
She did a song with her father a few years ago. She sort of described it as quite a healing process for her. She's challenged herself in her songwriting to do something original. It was something I told him we'd do when I was a little girl, and I like doing what I say I'm gonna do. I like to be able to complete thoughts. And also, my dad is a badass, and he's this tough know-it-all. And for once, we were able to reverse roles, and I was able to give him something and show him something he'd never done before and would have not been able to do had it not been for me. So it was creepy, kind of, because it was total role rehearsal, and, and but beautiful at the same time because I got to see the humble, sort of nervous side of a man that I've looked up to my whole life. She bought her daddy a Rolex as soon as she got her first platinum record because he'd had to sell his Rolex to look after her as a child. Oh, yeah, so she's sweet. Alicia earned her nickname at an early age. When I was like eight, I went to the YMCA for camp and this kid I had a crush on pulled my pants down in front of everybody in like an auditorium and I had no underwear on and I'd, so I blushed and turned pink and it basically followed me throughout my life. Alicia Beth Moore's stage name is a red herring because she's not very pink, she's not very fluffy. She does coat it in sugar, but don't be fooled by the colour. She's always got the exclamation mark in her pink eye, hasn't she? No one really calls me Alicia. I feel like I'm in trouble when people call me Alicia. But, I mean, I have several different nicknames. I have like 20 different nicknames. Ali, Alex, Leech, Alicia. What are my other nicknames? Betty, um, bitch, <laughs> head bitch, <laughs> I have a lot. After her parents' separation, Pink moved in with her mother, who struggled to manage her increasingly unruly daughter. She had a lot of trouble when she was younger and was very rebellious. She was in, like, bands, like, dark rock bands as a teenager. The teenage years are pretty rebellious, involving drugs and all sorts of swearing and storming out of the house. Pink's relationship with her mother has been a bit awkward as well over the years, given sort of the, the childhood she had with the arguing all the time. And she went into this huge rebellious stage and started taking a lot of drugs and going out and partying. I'm no better at discipline than my mom was, so... My dogs walk all over me the same way I walked all over my mom. It's good, it's really reassuring. By her mid-teens, the burgeoning rebel had gone into self-destruct mode. The thing that makes Pink unique is that she's pretty raw and untutored for a pop girl. She doesn't come schooled, she didn't go to an academy, she didn't have any special privilege, and I think that shows through. There's something refreshingly unvarnished about her. She's got that kind of background. She's a bit of a drug kid, isn't she? Bit of a club kid. She was off her nut in nightclubs. But because she's got that kind of undercurrent, she's a bit more street and genuine and a bit more honest than a lot of her contemporaries. I think it got a bit too much for her mum, so her mum asked her to move in with her dad because she couldn't handle it. She ended up moving away. Is it true that you had to go to prison for a few days or nights? It was all crap. I was mostly innocent. <laughs> well, what was it for? Um, just dumb stuff. I mean, I never got caught after I was 18 because I knew I'd have a record, but... It, disorderly conduct, shoplift. I mean, I did steal showgirls, I'll admit to that one. But, and then I took it back because it sucked. But, um... Just dumb stuff, you know? I lived in a small town, and honestly, the police had nothing better to do than harass kids that they didn't think fit their picture of a wholesome young girl or boy. The gifts that would turn Alicia Moore into an international star were apparent from a young age. During her teenage years, she wrote her own music. I always wrote poetry when I was in school. I always wrote a lot of poetry. Poetry was kind of like my medicine, but... I didn't really know how to write songs until 
probably four, three or four years ago. And then I just started turning all my poetry into songs with music and it just kind of happened. It was just, I don't know. Of all the hugely successful commercial pop girls of the last 15 years, Pink is probably more involved in the songwriting process than most, both lyrically and melodically. Not everyone can write stuff that appeals internationally like that, so she's very cool. I'll rate her highly as a songwriter. The things that she pushes out and what she portrays, I see that it's very much from herself. The records speak for themselves, they're quite autobiographical. Everything she has to say goes into the music and into the lyrics. I've seen her work in a recording studio. The things I saw her do and I, how involved she was, just not as in writing and singing, I was like, okay, cool, she knows what she's doing. She does write her own stuff um, and music as well. She plays a lot of instruments to match what she writes, so that's a talent in itself. A lot of the songs are, are deeply emotional and you can really feel the, the pain. She has an idea that there's something, some sound, some groove, some feel is boggling around there and then she tries to find it. The wordplay comes across with things that she thinks about. You can really hear it in her work, which for me is very coherent. I'm inspired when I'm angry, or I'm inspired when I'm really happy, or, or confused, or something like that. It has to be an extreme emotion for me to sit down and write a song. There was nothing mellow about Pink's teenage years. She was unable to find focus until she made music her life. Pink had a pretty tumultuous late 90s it was touch and go at one point if there would be any future let alone a musical future she was off her nut in a nightclub and she was asked to go and sing she just about got it together to sing but the dj he said can you come back but be straight when you come back stay off the drugs and then she did that and that was where she kind of realized that she was going to be successful it's credit to her for pulling herself up by her bootstraps and getting herself together sufficiently and not dying, instead being reborn as a incredibly successful, highly motivated woman who would take most of the control of the future direction of her career. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't making music? Hard to say, but um, in reality, I don't know that I'd be here. Does music mean that much to you then? Absolutely. It's been my escape. By the time she was barely in her teens, Pink was heavily into the Philadelphia club scene. At the age of 14, she had her first job, singing backup in a friend's rap group. Pink was spotted by a record company executive from MCA, who asked her to audition for a new R&B group called Basic Instinct. Pink got the job on the spot. Pink started performing when she was about 14 in local clubs where she lived in Philadelphia. She started off as a member of the R&B girl group and it looks as though that's the direction she was heading in. They got sort of flown to Atlanta to put a record together but it never actually got released. The group went nowhere. Nonetheless, an R&B trio named Choice snapped Pink up as one of three female leads. They made a demo and were immediately signed to La Face by the producer and music industry impresario, L.A. Reid. She got into La Face's office with Choice, who were uh, an R&B act. L.A. Reid was definitely really important to her career and he got her signed in the first place and made her go solo. It was either kind of she went solo or, or it was over sort of thing, so she took the choice to go solo. When she was under the tutelage of L.A. Reid, that was the only example of her as the pop puppet, the manipulated girl. And that was when it all started with her first album. I'm taking over. She felt empowered and decided to leave and do her own thing, and she's been doing it very well ever since. There's been no looking back. I was in a group. I was a lead 
singer of a group, two groups actually, and that kind of didn't work. <laughs> so, huh? It did work, right? Everything happens for a reason. By the age of 16, Pink was transformed from a member of a pre-packaged all-girl R&B trio into a solo hit machine. She has never looked back. There are few more jaw-dropping pop spectacles than a live Pink performance. Combining sophisticated aerobatics with slickly choreographed dance routines, the star has developed one of the most spectacular shows in pop history. As a performer, she's just one of the best. I mean, she's gone for so many years, brought so many differences to the table. That's why she's so successful. I'd rate her, like, high up there. If you've never been to a Pink concert, if you've never seen her live, Expect the unexpected. You have no idea what may happen next if you go, so go, people, go. It's always something that you can get your teeth into. She pushes herself to the limit and wows the entire audience. She knows what she's doing and how she wants it. She's an artist, she's grown, she wants to try new things. She puts on such a show, she doesn't just stand and sing. She's got such a presence on the stage. That's why when we say the word artist, in regards to music artists, they are artists because it's not just about the music. Electric would just be the word. Electric. Fun House is a hard show to top, but that's my job. That's what I have to figure out. Whether I have to light myself on fire and shoot myself out of a cannon, that's what I have to do. I have to figure it out. And that's the fun part for me. In the big budget, high concept touring game, Pink has become the female pop star to beat live on stage. Moonlighting as an aerialist and trapeze artist, the star delivers an intoxicating blend of gymnast-trained athleticism and slickly choreographed, breathtaking performances. I don't know of any other artist that's done this. She is in a harness with amazing acrobats on, on silks and with wires and spinning around. She was being harnessed up and it was amazing. She was on the stage and the seats way, way at the back over the other side of the arena, up in the gods. She said, I'm going to come see you in a minute. And she literally flew through the entire O2 arena, right to the very back, up high to those people up there, and was just waving at them. She has the head mic on and she's however many feet up in the air, tumbling. She started from the top of the crowd, worked her way all the way through singing live. And the crowd was just constantly grabbing her left, right and centre, but she and Kate just goes right through and carried on singing. She proceeded to spend an entire song singing, flying around the entire arena. It wasn't just about being a spectacle on stage. It was still very much about the music. But one thing I very much like about Pink, how you can intertwine the two. It would be impossible to represent an entire show with one song as it would an entire album with one single. There's too much. It's too much. What you won't see is the silks and the nets and the danger. It's a lot of emotions in an hour and a half. It's really good. Few, if any, performers deliver better pop shows than Pink. Her mesmerizing performances have allowed her to rise above the competition, attracting critical acclaim from all quarters of the media. Pink was the biggest artist I've worked for. There was nothing that was intimidating apart from I didn't know if she'd be like snobby, if she'd be crowded, if she'd come in and like high five everyone. I didn't know what to expect and this was my biggest commercial job so I wanted to make sure that I was being professional and not kind of looking at her and staring. To perform and to be accepted to work with an artist that big from the States as the very first type of big job, for me, was just through the roof. I enjoyed every single second of it. Very surreal experience when I first got introduced. There wasn't heaps of people surrounding her and people on the phones and agents or things like that. Kind of came in, she had like a hoodie, she had a hoodie on this black jacket, and I was kind of like, hey, and she was like, hi. Hey. I was just like, okay, there she goes. 
I was nervous, obviously, like everybody else. I was thinking, wow, this is a big American star. And I'm like from a small little town in called Leeds. Um, so to work with her is a little bit of self-pressure, but nothing related from her. She brings a sense of relaxed vibe between you. She will make you just feel as normal as this interview is going on right now. I always felt so at ease. It didn't feel like a job. It just felt like she left go and play on stage. <laughs> Her personality is fun. The word fun would cover just so many bases of what she is. Um, and it makes feel people feel comfortable, especially when you're in the work type of environment. As a person, like the times I've been with her, she's been very uh, closed. The times that we did spend together, I did get this kind of, she was a very personal person. I think it takes a lot to get into her or get to, to know her in that way. She treats everyone the same, like a stereotypical type of thing to say, but she really does. And um, so, yeah, it was a breeze. Pink has become almost as well known for her campaigning activities as she has for her music. In 2007, the compassionate singer teamed up with the animal welfare charity Party for Animals Worldwide. When I started Party for Animals Worldwide, right from the beginning, Pink was who I wanted to approach. I knew that she um, was passionate about animal welfare, so I felt that if I could reach her, if she knew about what we were trying to do, that she would support it. I had absolute unwavering belief in that. I had no contacts in the music industry. I asked for a backstage meet and greet at one of her concerts. I thought that would be a good opportunity to just try and engage with her, get her to sign a t-shirt, and to my disbelief and sheer excitement, I received a positive response and was able to meet her very briefly backstage. She's such a fiery and strong character, and. When I met her backstage, I was a little bit starstruck and probably didn't deal with it very well. If I didn't get myself across entirely how I wanted to, because she was an idol of mine, I thought I'd really ruined my chance, but luckily I'd written down my request and a little bit more about the organisation, and I handed her a letter. I didn't think she would read the letter. I thought she would just give it to her assistant or put it to one side and that would be it. Um, however, I was wrong. She obviously did read it. The next day, I received an email saying she was interested in the organisation. You can imagine I was absolutely blown away. It was like a dream come true, you know, I wanted someone to pinch me. A few days later, she came down and I showed her around the Monkey Sanctuary. She had Carrie with her and it was very intimate. We didn't tell the media or anything, and we were closed at the time, so there was no hassle for her, and she was great. When she very first arrived, she was walking down the drive, and one of the sanctuary dogs headed up the driveway, yapping like mad at her. I was immediately a little bit embarrassed and like trying to call the dog back, but she just simply, out of the small crowd she was with, she was the first to just kneel down and kind of, you know, open her arms and knew exactly how to handle a dog like that, and the dog fell in love with her instantly. She's obviously very used to animals. She was brilliant. I got to see a different side to her and her passion for animal welfare was very, very evident. It was very sincere. She really grasped what it was all about straight away and she really listened to the stories of some of the individuals. I didn't tell her how much of a fan I was. I felt I shouldn't, that it was unprofessional or something, but, you know, little did she know, you know, I'd had a poster in my bedroom wall for years. And we had a cup of tea out in front of the house and she was lovely and uh, Kerry was really nice as well. Pink agreed to headline a concert in Cardiff, Wales, to raise funds for thousands of animals in need. 
actually enabled one of my dreams to come true, which was to host this concert and raise the money and, and the awareness for hundreds of animals. I hadn't been involved in the music industry, so it was all very new for me. So seeing everything being set up was amazing, and I was in the seats in the arena just watching all the crews setting up the stage. She came out and gave me a hug, and she just said in my ear, we did it, you know, we've made it happen. And that was, that was, yeah, that was really special. You couldn't wish for someone any more wonderful than she is. What they've done with this charity is brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. And it's a night where the whole country comes together, and I just think it's great. It wasn't until the start of the new century that Pink's career as a serious solo contender got underway. Her breakthrough album, Can't Take Me Home, was released in 2000. Split Personality, which is number one, is my favorite because it allowed me to sing the way I like to sing. That's me, 150%. Like, I love to sing. That's, that's... Growing up listening to Four Non Blondes and stuff, like you'll recognize those influences in that song. Can't Take Me Home was her first album. It was very R&B driven. When she first came out, obviously it was a very, very much R&B, just after she first kind of hit the mainstream. Her debut album was fairly inauspicious. It was R&B tinged, as a lot of music was back then. So it started out as very kind of R&B at first, and then it slowly transcended into very commercial and very pop. It was a great album, but since then, her more recent albums have definitely gone more towards the rock genre. She dibble-dabbled in so many different genres, depending on what she feels is right at the time. She looked like she was going to be shiny R&B, influenced by Timberland and Pharrell Williams, that kind of jerky R&B sound. But she very quickly left that behind, and her punky roots showed through. She hasn't really been able to hide them ever since. The pop shock rocker's career went from strength to strength. In 2001, Pink joined forces with Maya, Lil' Kim, and Christina Aguilera, covering a high-energy version of Lady Marmalade for the soundtrack of the hit movie, Moulin Rouge. We actually had a great time together. We support each other 100%. I'm a fan of theirs, too. I mean, I really enjoy all their music, and um, it was just a blast to be a part of, to be uh, working with all of them, so it was fun. I want to say this year, myself, along with my girls, Christina Aguilera Pink and Maya, we are nominated for a Grammy and we are also performing at the Grammys. So it's going to be so much fun and I can't wait. It's like a battle of the bitches. It's awesome. I'm happy to be a part of it. Lady Marmalade topped the charts around the world. In the US, it became Pink's first number one single and earned the star her first Grammy Award for Best Pop Collaboration. Initially viewed as just another face in the late 90s crowd of teen pop acts, the multi-talented artist quickly transcended and outgrew that label. The 2001 album release of Misunderstood sealed Pink's reputation as an accomplished songwriter. Oh, it was the perfect transformation. It was the perfect, I think it bridges the gap between the last album and this one. Misunderstood, that was the first album she really had a bit more creative control over. She went in and told the guy in the record label her face to listen to her because he wasn't listening. So she's always pushed things a bit harder. Pink pretty much came into her own when she made the Misunderstood album. That pretty much cemented the public's perception of Pink as the artist currently and forever more known as Pink. That's what made her the way she is today. The Misunderstood album featured songwriting contribution from legendary four non-blonde singer Linda Perry. She hooked up with Linda Perry, who used to be in Four Non Blondes in the 90s. It was an unlikely pairing at the time, because Linda Perry had had hits, but wasn't known as a preeminent, multi-million selling 
bespoke songwriter. This whole misunderstood thing, which she did with Four Non Blondes, right, with Linda Perry, really kind of pulled out that whole emotional thing with her and she got really cool. It was actually Pink's inspired decision to collaborate with her. She divined something in Perry uh, that would uh, provide the catalyst for her own transformation from R&B girl to punk pop queen. It's funny because the same week I was supposed to start thinking about my new album, I was kind of being nosy and going through my makeup artist book because he left it out and I saw her number and I was like, oh my God, I love her. And I just stole it, quickly wrote it down on my hand and I called her and I left her a message. I was like, oh my God, I love you. I'm not this big diva. You have to call me back. I got arrested singing your crap out of my window. You owe me. If I can find out your number, I can find out where you live. And I was basically just her stalker, and she called me back, she's like, you're nuts, you should come over. So I did, and we wrote 15 songs in a month and a half. And that was the start of the record. It wasn't planned, it just, just was total freedom, and it rocked, and I had so much fun, and just kept going, I didn't turn back. The career-defining album proved to be a monumental success, with sales exceeding 12 million copies. I was so nervous before this album came out in the States. I mean, I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I was so proud of it and so happy. I guess that's why I was so nervous, because it, I was just like, oh my God, this means so much to me. If people don't like it, I'm gonna be crushed and I'm gonna die. I had my dad on the phone for a week and he was getting pretty sick of me, but it feels really good to know you took the chance and and it kind of worked, and it, I kind of get to tell everybody I told you so, and that's always good for me. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. After the staggering success of Misunderstood, Pink had entered into the rarefied realms inhabited only by the world's biggest stars. Every single illusion that I had is now completely shattered. It's nothing that you think it is. It's not what it's cracked up to be. It's you know, when I was little and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a singer, I just figured that was all you do. You just get on stage and sing and everybody loves you and throws flower petals at your feet. I didn't know that singing was like five and a half percent of the whole thing. I didn't know that there was business involved. I didn't know that there was politics, which there's a whole lot. Pink is recognized for her tough girl image but it's always been the music that mattered most. The rocker takes no prisoners when it comes to writing lyrics, and her tempestuous on-off relationship with professional motocross racer Kerry Hart provides the material for many of her songs. Guys think I'm a man basher, but that's not it. It's like, I'm a woman. I happen to like men, and if they didn't play games with me, I wouldn't have anything to write about. So a guy can easily take the song and sing it to a woman, because that's his side, but I'm on my side. You know, you can't expect him to be on your side. Pink's phases haven't been as multifarious as other chart pop divas. There has been a certain softening and mellowing over the years, not least because she's got married and she's had a child. The unconventional couple met in 2001, married in 2006, split up in 2008, and reunited in 2009. Marriage really doesn't change much for us because we don't look at it in a conventional way. Um, we've been together for a long time, so we're, we're good friends, we're happy. He's a motocross driver and they met in 2001 at one of the motocross events and they sort of dated for a couple of years and she proposed to him at one of his events holding up a big card when he's sort of going over one of the jumps saying, will you marry me? And she flipped it over and said, I'm serious on the other side. The thing about Carrie Hart, he was a motocross guy. It was difficult for them to see each other. We've both been on tour the entire time we've been together, which has been about four and a half, five years. So it's very much like being single with um, with random hotel visits all over the world. It's nice. The Pink Heart relationship proved to be an unorthodox union. We had a 
the short separation and got back together. Pink's marriage was kind of weird. Her relationship it was on, it was off, it was on, it was off. They got married, they split up, they had a baby, they got married again. That's life, isn't it? I had a lot left over from my last breakup with my current husband, Baby Daddy. So it's just kind of all over the place. It's kind of amazing that it's endured through all the different twists and turns. And now he appears in every one of the videos and things can be going better. I'll say that, they'll probably split up next week. They're probably going to be one of those couples that just have that kind of rocky relationship. They're both quite fiery people, so it's always going to happen. I don't think maturity has anything to do with marriage. If anything, marriage makes you more immature, especially in the way that you fight. Um. <laughs> <laughs> they have a child called Willow, so I think they seem to be pretty happy now. I think they've sorted themselves out. It's a responsibility to yourself first, who you want to be as a person, before you can be a parent or as you're becoming a parent. If it's a whoops, then you're like, oh, oh shit, I have a lot of work to do on myself before this child starts listening to me. Pink welcomed her first child in 2011. For a star who has made a career out of writing songs about angst and frustrations, the arrival of her daughter has melted her edges. I think the way that Willow has inspired my music is that uh, the easiest way I can explain it is I used to be very dramatic and I'm not at all anymore. And I used to wake up and be like, ah, oh, fuck, what do I have to do today? And I don't feel good, maybe I have cancer. I used to just be really dark, and now I'm like, I wake up and check her pulse and make sure she's not having a temperature, and then we dance, and we dance, and we dance, and we dance, and we go on bike rides, and we dance some more, and everything's a song, and it's just a lot more fun. Seeing her the other night, there is a little subtle difference. She is still kick-ass rock mama, but there is a difference. She was singing the perfect song, which has a word in it, and she was joking on stage and saying she was about to sing it, and because Willow wasn't around, she was gonna really kick it out. But she said, oh, but the mother instinct to me, she said she looked around the crowd and she could see there was young kids in the audience and she was like, I just can't bring myself to do it. So, and she wouldn't have done that a few years ago. I don't believe being a mother has necessarily softened her. I think being a parent has made her a bit more open-minded. Your goals, ambitions, ways of viewing life all change when you're a parent. And I think that it's fair to say that's had an influence on what work she kind of does and how she does it and how many tours she does and things like that. Motherhood softens her image a bit because she's got more feminine in her looks and she looks comfortable in her own skin, which she wasn't to start off with. And that was part of her initial radical thing. But now she's just a bit, a bit happier, I think. Just developed her more so, and I think it adds another edge to her, but she still uh, rocks out as well. Studio sessions used to be okay, I'm gonna start my record, let's get the whiskey and some cigarettes, and let's do this damn thing. And now it's sort of Monday through Friday from one to ten. And, um, she would be there every couple of hours, and everybody I worked with is a friend or a parent, so it was very, very easy. The singer-songwriter admits having a rock star mum could be a little confusing for her daughter. I can tell it's very confusing for her. Two things, mommy's voice on the phone, which is how we listen to my music, and Skype with grandma and grandpa. Can you imagine being five, six months old and seeing a little talking head in the computer? It used to be something we could only imagine. Now she's like, she pulls down the computer and looks behind it. I'm like, right? I know, isn't that fucking weird? So it's it's fun to, uh, she likes the black eyed peas, which is hard at 7 a.m. sometimes. 2003 saw the release of Pink's third studio album, Try This, which continued with her reinvention and introduced fans to a new, heavier rock direction. 
The biggest challenge, I think, was nobody telling me what I couldn't do. Um, I've always had people telling me that I can't do something, and then I've proven them wrong, so it was a little uninspiring just to be completely free <laughs> to do whatever I wanted. It was a challenge just to make another record in general for me, because I felt like I put out my entire 23 years of life into Misunderstood, and I figured I'd have to live 20 more years if I had anything to talk about. But it happened, and I was inspired. Try This, that was when she really started getting rocky. She did Try This, which got her a Grammy, which was kind of artist credibility. Her voice is unique because a lot of the female artists out there at the moment have got very poppy voices, and they all can sound pretty much the same. In 2004, three of the most powerful women in show business joined forces for a Pepsi commercial. Pink, Britney Spears and Beyonce stood united during the premiere in London as hundreds of fans braved Britain's Arctic weather to catch a glimpse of the global megastars. diverse and we're so different and like when you put people like that together I think it's very interesting for people to see you know the diversity and, and the characters basically you know and um, I think that's why they chose us like this and it worked out like our chemistry together when we were shooting was like really really cool so Who do you think like the best gladiator? The best gladiator? I don't know I've got some tricks up my sleeve I can really work it out I can like really fight so they better watch out. I think we all represent something different and we all can reach different um, people, but I think the combination of us three was just genius, you know? Um, our voices are different, but when you put it together, it was the soul, the rock, and the pop, it was just, it turned out great and everyone looked different. Just the variations of everything, just we kind of complemented each other. Who do you think like the best gladiator out of you all? I don't know. I'm not sure, that's not nice. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not me, how about that? Two thousand and six saw the release of I'm Not Dead, a testament to Pink's enduring popularity and widespread appeal. I've written every song. I just I only play drums, so can't really get much melodical inspiration from that. Although I've tried. I'm Not Dead was pretty rad as well. And she worked with Rancid, didn't she, for that one? I worked with some incredible people. Um, Butch Walker, Billy Mann, Mike Elizondo, Max Martin, Dr. Luke. I'm a very, very lucky girl. 2008's electrifying Funhouse album reached the coveted number one spot in six countries, while the Funhouse tour proved to be a sellout round the world. We've never sold this many advanced tickets before, ever. And it's really exciting and comforting that people want to come play with us. It's a fun show. It's a lot. It's more than I've ever done before. Everybody's had a really good time putting it together, and the band's tight. I'm just trying to remember the words at this point. Yeah. As you can see, the, the stage is not built yet, or as you can hear. No, the band's really tight. I'm ready. I just have to remember the words, which I haven't been recently, but it makes me laugh, so. As long as we don't take ourselves too seriously, I think we're okay. It seemed the last rites on Pink's career would be administered by her record label, Jive, with the 2010 release of her greatest hits album. But a curious thing happened. Pink survived, and her label did not. From the time she first came to prominence, Pink has refused to live up to the female pop singer stereotype and consistently breaks the conventional celebrity mold. I think the ultimate goal for me was to win an award and to be able to tell every teacher that never believed in me in a way they could stick it. But then when you actually get there, you don't feel that anger anymore because you've done the work and you feel really good about it and it becomes a much more positive thing. So when you get up there and win that award, it's the first thing on your mind is not and my fourth grade teacher, I hated you and I told you I'd be up here. 
it just, it goes away. I don't know. And it was nice to be able to, you know, put a certain finger in the air and say, you know, look at the person that you thought was, wouldn't be anything. But after that, it's more like, all right, I'm here now. Now what? What am I going to do with all this? Am I going to be a, a vacuous, anorexic, unhealthy waste uh, space filler? Or am I going to do what I was raised to do, which is be a freedom fighter or just piss the world off? The edgy pop icon is certainly happy to stir up controversy. She's a rock chick through and through. I think it's her honesty that really appeals to people. She's a strong-minded lady. She likes to surprise people. She likes to step outside the box, and she definitely doesn't like conforming. She has got an outspoken attitude, and I greatly admire her for that. You get an example of Pink, the principal performer, when you hear that Prince William invited her to perform at his 21st birthday party. She was extraordinarily flattered, but she turned it down. Why? Because she discovered that he shoots animals, not on a regular basis, and he does at least wait till the shop's shut. But um, yeah, well done, Pink. He invited me to his 21st birthday, and I read the whole thing about how he was in Africa and ramming spears through animals. And that just hurts my heart, and I wanted him to know. And I figured if he wants me at his birthday party, then he'll listen to what I have to say. He might not like it, and that's too bad, but I didn't like what I read either. I'm not surprised that Pink refused to play at his birthday party. She doesn't think that animals should be killed for entertainment and for so-called sport. And I hope that that kind of action from celebrities like Pink will encourage people to change their ways. She stands by her morals. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of temptation is, is uh, pointed towards her, be it a royal member or, you know, someone off the street, she, she stands by it. She's kick-ass. It's just about being very present and aware and learning and changing. And I just feel very alive and feisty and, you know, I have a lot to say, so I will not sit down and shut up. She has this thing sometimes where it's just... And you can't tell, you're like, Angry. I don't know. I'm just going to wait over there. Split personalities, that kind of sums Pink up. She's the bouncy, fun, bright, pop girl on the one hand, mainstream kind of girl you want to take home to meet your parents. The other hand, if you do take her home to meet your parents, she's liable to do something really embarrassing and outrageous and make a complete show of herself. She just can't stop herself. I haven't been arrested in a long time. I'm very proud of myself. Um, it just means I haven't gotten caught. <clears throat> what kind of, I mean, I get kicked out of places a lot because I'm very outspoken and I stick up for my friends. But, um, and I like to have a good time. So sue me. Um, I don't want to get in that much trouble. People allow me to do it pretty much whatever I want. Pink is a woman to be admired for many reasons. Over the course of her groundbreaking career, the controversial singer has been a fierce animal rights supporter. Since I was in grade school, just my two issues in life have always been animal rights, animal cruelty, and the legalization of marijuana. But, you know, I gave that up a long time ago. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. It takes someone who's a bit gutsy and a bit bold to speak up for animal rights because it's not an issue which is in the mainstream. Pink is a pop star with a conscience. She's very passionate about many campaigns. She's a massive PETA supporter. That's an organisation close to her heart. PETA's been working with Pink for nearly a decade. She's been anti fur her whole life. Unlike some pop stars that claim to be fashion icons and, and innovative leaders, Pink is not afraid to speak out. People like Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez have been made aware of how cruel the fur trade is. So if they choose to not take action and not to stop wearing fur, then there's nothing I can do about that. I can only choose not to uh, support anything that they do. She uses her power quite wisely, quite savvily. 
but she's not too underground to alienate people. Like the stuff with the anti-fur lobby, she'll put her neck on the line. I think she's quite honest. She uses her position to bring attention to some really sensitive um, issues, and she does it in a really wonderful way because she's not shoving information down people's throats. I would just say that the people that do wear fur in this day and age, I can only hope that they become fur in their next life. I think every mink coat or every fur coat should come with a video showing someone how it's made. So if you can sit down and watch the video and then still purchase the coat and you can live with that, then you deserve to wear that coat. Take it and then pass it down to your generation of people, to the next generation in your bloodline because you're obviously capable of doing that, but if you're just doing it and you're not thinking about what you're doing, that's the problem I have. Most teenagers aren't bothered about what a spokesperson for Peter, like me, has to say, but they can relate to Pink. She has a huge appeal right across the spectrum, and it's because of that appeal that she's able to put across the animal rights message to far corners of the world that sometimes we, just, we mere mortals just can't reach. A hundred years ago, Peter would have been lobbying to seek the favor of politicians who decades ago were the sort of moral leaders of our time. Now people are much more fascinated by rock stars. Uh, they look to those people to see what they're eating, what they're wearing, and how they're living their lives. And that's why we go after them. We're very lucky that we're able to work with people like Pink and who give up not only their, their time and often their money that they donate, but you know, to take the time out of a worldwide tour where you're doing countless interviews, your songwriting, that's just a, a wonderful gift that she gives to animals. I think you gotta choose your battles, and I like to say I'm a work in progress when it comes to you know, balancing out which causes to follow and, and how to be as good as possible. I wear leather boots, I don't eat cow. You just have to be a work in progress, as long as you're aware First step is denial, not only in AA, but in life. Um, <laughs> it's just, you kind of just got to choose your battles. For me, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat any meat, I eat fish. I'm working on that. I got to watch Finding Nemo a couple more times, and I'll be there. Um, you know, I do wear leather boots. I try not to use any in my touring, so I'm not, like, going through pair after pair after pair after pair. I suppose everyone in a certain sense has the ability to be outspoken, but then there's those who say it and do it, and a lot of people don't, but she does, which is cool. When Pink speaks, people take notice. You know, she has this megaphone at her disposal, and she uses it, thank goodness, for the sake of animals. The fur is rampant, and it's increasing, which is insane to me with all the alternatives and all the materials out there. I find it repulsive. It's my opinion, I stand behind it, I won't wear it. I try not to converse with people that do because I get nauseous. I'm always gonna side with the animals. Displaying the kind of honesty rarely exhibited by major stars, the mega-talented singer has never been less than forthright about her views. When she heard that someone had thrown a, a puppy off an overpass in Los Angeles, she donated $5,000 so that the dog could have emergency surgery. You know, this is the kind of compassionate woman that the pink is. Hopefully now the times are changing that people are starting to see that there's more to being a pop star than looking nice and selling out big shows. Pink's also spoken about, about horse-drawn carriages in New York. I have been in New York a lot in the last couple of years, and every time I see it, it just kind of hurts my heart. Every time I see a horse-drawn carriage, I kind of stand in the middle of the street and point and yell animal cruelty at the top of my lungs. So I figured there's got to be a more mature way of going about it. The, the driver, the passengers are shocked that the pink is there shouting animal cruelty at them because it's, it's fair enough. And these horses are cruelly abused by unwitting tourists who go on them in New York City. And what we can say about Pink is that she gives her all for animals. She is, works tirelessly to speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves. She's a wonderful asset to have on board at Team Peter. In 2012, Pink, who has always been an advocate of individualism, 
announced that she would be the new face to represent beauty brand CoverGirl Cosmetics. I, believe it or not, have always been a makeup girl. I have a picture of myself in my Smurfs onesie at five years old with my curls and just lips and rouge. The truth about makeup is it's necessary. <laughs> that and really good lighting. <laughs> Everyone needs a fan as well. I was quite surprised by that latest development in her career and the approbation of the cosmetics industry because she seemed to be apart from all of that. That seems to contradict some of the assumptions that we've had about Pink over the year, about not doing what's expected and not being conventionally attractive and not playing up to stereotypical ideas of what constitutes a perfect looking pop woman. It was a good move by her because um, she was saying that you can, you can have short hair, you can have piercings, you don't have to look like this to be attractive. So I wasn't hugely surprised. I think that was a really good move for her. It's just a contemporary way of working, isn't it? If you get Covered Girl to help you out, you help them out, and then stuff gets paid for so you get a bigger house in Beverly Hills. In 2013, Pink was named by VH1 as one of the sexiest artists alive. A true advocate of individuality, the star effortlessly mixes glamour and grit with unconventional tough girl style. Her style is very much individual, very punk rock, very, it's like gangster, it's like, it's very her. She doesn't really follow trends, she kind of sets her own, which is a good thing. She never retro or Looking back, she is always very current. She likes to be different with everything, you know, her music, her attitude, her look, her style. I have a lot of different looks. It depends on the mood. It's absolutely, it's, it's an expression of your mood. And it, for tour, my makeup is colorful and it's always gotta be smoky and sexy. And then there's just the no makeup makeup look, which is actually harder than any of them. Um, it just depends on your mood. It's just like your outfit or the color of your tube socks. Twenty thirteen proved to be a stellar year for the mega talented superstar. The overwhelming success of the Truth About Love album and world tour was rebirth of a career at its finest. I was having a lot of fun. I think that's a new thing for me. I was just having a lot more fun than I've ever had before. And I think production-wise, it's a lot more interesting. And the musicality, I, I feel like I raised the bar for myself. People heard that there was a new Pink album coming. And I didn't see that many interviews with her in the press. And there, I think there was an anticipation that her best days were behind her. She put out the first single, it did really, really well. It was refreshing, it was kind of like, okay, cool, this is, this is good. The Truth About Love is as successful as in her prime kind of albums. On YouTube, she's got millions and millions and millions of hits. I went to number one in numerous countries and sold very well. She just doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. There seems to be no end. To see her being on such a high caliber of popularity is amazing. That made me happy. Pink, if you are listening and watching this, world tour let's go when you're on a world tour it is crazy the, the demand for any artist uh, no matter how big unless the company sees fit or unless it was MJ RIP um, they don't give you a lot of time they want things done now to dance on a tour is very very grueling on the body it takes a lot out and you have to be dedicated all the countries you go to no matter how lovely are you don't really get time to spend in them you arrive you go on the plane you arrive at the airport you go to the hotel, you're practically in rehearsals probably that same day. Then you go back and you're mashed because you're jet lagged, as well as being tired from rehearsals. Then you have to wake up and do that all over again, and then majority of the time it's showtime that same day. The fitness level needs to be up here. You're going to be doing number after number after number for like two hours. The physical conditioning that your body has to be in is crazy. You have to get used to being jet lagged, a lot of sleep. It's like you have to get used to being tired. Anyone getting involved, I would definitely say go to the gym. <laughs>
Pink is recognized as one of the most daring and innovative performers of the modern era. But until recently, she has been curiously underrated, adored by her fans, but surprisingly ignored by the mainstream media. Pink has had to work harder to achieve the level of success enjoyed by her peers. You know, she's almost like um, hiding in plain sight, Pink. You know, she's huge, but no one seems to write about her or talk about her. I think she's underrated a lot as an artist, probably the same way. Prince is underrated a lot. She has been, to a certain audience, a huge artist for years, but she has not received the recognition that she should have been receiving until very recently. That's frustrated me because I admire her so much, both as an artist and as an individual. She sells millions of records, but doesn't seem to register as big as Britney or Katy Perry or Lady Gaga or one of those. She doesn't actively court the media. She's not like Madonna, who you know that what she's saying is going to be tarting around for press a lot of the time. She's very cool in that way. She doesn't do that many interviews. She doesn't try and sort of conform to the sort of girly pop artist who gets her bits out all the time. Her talent is really what has driven her career rather than the publicity and any sort of stunts. To her, I don't think it matters. She just cares what the people who support her feel. If there's something popular, I tend to not, I try to not go anywhere near it. Um, and that's funny, being a pop star. So, I think it's helpful. I, well, also, everything's really techno-y as well, and that's like, gives me bad flashbacks to my past and makes me want to grab a glow stick, so I try to steer clear. She's getting bigger and bigger all the time, and she is now starting to get the recognition that I think she should have been getting years ago. One measure of Pink's contemporary relevance is if you do a compare and contrast with One Direction and Justin Bieber, who recently sold out five nights each at the O2 in London, well, Pink's done four. Um, that's pretty impressive when you think, you know, Bieber is a lot newer, One Direction a hell of a lot newer, Pink's been around for a decade and a half and in the world of pop, to still be able to sell out four nights of a major uh, venue in one of the capital cities of the world, that is seriously impressive. The media has not given her that type of shine, I know that kind of sucks, maybe that's what she wanted, but now she's back in it, I mean it's boom. <laughs> Over the course of her groundbreaking career, Pink's music has struck a chord not only with her legions of fans around the world, but has also paved the path for many of today's most popular female artists. I'm giving face, people. Giving face. That's all I want to do is give this. Pink's been a huge influence for a lot of the more recent female artists. She influenced Rihanna, she's influenced Miley Cyrus, she's influenced all these different people who have come since. You'll see that people like Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift have taken a leaf out of Pink's book with regard to how to outgrow that bit of your musical career and then embrace the next stage. She influenced a lot of people on the way, from like Rihanna to Adele. Adele saw one of her performances at the Brixton Academy and says it was sort of a defining moment in her life. I'm the biggest Pink fan, yeah. Like, I've been listening to Pink since I was like 11. But again, to be anywhere near her is just like amazing and just feels like I feel like a bit of an imposter. Um, so I was waiting for someone to like slap me around the face and go, hey, got ya, punk. You know, like, I'm some random, random girl from South London in England and I'm not your typical kind of pop star or nothing and people I'm making my dreams come true, so. Everybody's gotta be a winner sometime. Pink is an irrepressible performer. Synonymous with exuberance and high energy, she continues to conquer in a teen-dominated industry, a tremendous testament to her brilliant career. She's an original. Despite so much competition from new acts, she's still holding her own after over a decade of work. She's one of the few, if, if not the only, artist of her generation that has the legs to endure for another decade. Pink is an amalgamation of someone that you really call an artist in every sense of the word. 
She's getting new fans all the time. She's obviously growing as an artist and growing in popularity. Seeing her journey that she's kind of gone through, we've got a sense that she's become more of the artist that she wants to be. If she stays true to herself and follows her direction, I think there'll always be a place for her within the arts. I also see her venturing into more film or the acting side. She's done a few cameo appearances in films. She did the Charlie's Angels film. It's always good to branch out and to do different things. She'd be great doing the X Factor thing. I think she'd do that really well. She'd be very good as a mouthy judge. You never know. You never know with <laughs> Pink, who has previously dismissed hosting American Idol, still rejects the idea of signing up as a judge on a talent show. It's not my deal. It's not cute, to be honest, unless you have an accent. I think the only reason Simon gets away with it is because it sounds cool. It doesn't sound cool coming from me. <laughs> I don't feel like we're creating songwriters or musicians or... I mean, it's a karaoke contest. There's some great karaoke singers, but I'm not getting a lot out of it. Pink really is one of a kind. An electrifying singer an accomplished songwriter and an iconic performer. She has just got that natural talent. She'll be able to carry on her career as long as she wants to. She's definitely going to be around in 10 years' time. She's going to still be rocking it. I was going to say she might not be as active on her tours and the shows that she puts on, but actually, I take that back. Knowing Pink, she probably will be. She'll be just as amazing and just as hardcore and just throwing herself around the stage and doing stuff that makes you drop your jaw with no harness, I'm sure. And, oh yeah, I think she'll be a popular artist for many, many years to come. This remarkable woman has carved an exceptional career through being a true artist. And as for the future, well, with Pink being Pink, Anything is possible. <laughs>